you're teaching this stuff, you're going to be doing a lot of, you're going to be a, do a lot of teaching. If you're teaching this, you're going to do a lot of teaching, a lot of coaching, because you're teaching some skills. And I've said this at many clinics before, that there, there isn't an offense in this world that I couldn't pick up in a half hour. I don't care what it is. And it's not that I'm that smart or anything like that. It's just that there's nothing to it. But when it comes to teaching a guy how to dribble, and when you want to spend some time on passing, and when you want to work on a guy shooting, who knows how long that's going to take. If you're lucky, it'll, it'll happen quick. But if, under normal circumstances, it's going to take you a long time to teach a guy how to dribble. And uh, what you have there is just a sense there that there's not enough uh, teaching going on as far as these fundamentals are concerned. There was never one single thing that I ever asked a player to do that didn't show up in the game. Somewhere, whatever I asked him to do had to be seen by him at some time during the game. Otherwise, I wouldn't ask him to do it. And to me, that's very important. I tell my guys that whoever brings the ball up the court, who's ever guarding you does not have eyes in the back of his head. And the only constraints that you have, the only difficulties that you have are caused by whatever fundamental flaws there are in your game. So that if you cannot dribble well with your left hand, you cannot dribble well with your right hand, if you don't have any dribble moves in there, to get yourself open. And somebody can say they'll force you down the side or they'll force you in the middle, then you, you're not fundamentally sound. And so what we do and what we did at Princeton for many years, and this is how I'm going to start off, is work with our guards in here on some kind of dribble moves so that they can play with the guy on the side. They can throw it to the guy on the side, right? And so one of the more common ones, and I'll have all the guards getting one line in here, all right? And let's get another ball down there. Somebody get a couple of balls. And then, Renee, start back behind the line there, and you're going to play with Eric in there and, and make some kind of dribble move that's going to, uh, uh, you're going to throw the ball to Eric and cut. All right, go ahead. Any kind of dribble move, all right? OK, and I'll cut. And just go back to the end of the line. Look for the ball. Get it, throw it to him, and he'll take it to the end of the line. Go ahead, Marcus. All right? All right? Here you go. All right? Good. All right? All right? All right? All right? All right? OK. This is probably more for your high school coaches, and I don't know, I don't think it would apply to the college coach, although it might, it might. I think I've seen a couple of pros that can't dribble either. No offense meant. But the first thing you don't want to do is you don't want to stare down at the ground. You want to look at him, or maybe you want to look at there. And let's say you're going to give a good crossover dribble. You've got to keep in mind that this guy here is in front of you so that when you do it, you have to move the ball quickly, get me off balance. It's got to go from your left hand to your right as fast as you can because he's got his hands out there digging. All right? So go ahead and do it. A little faster than that, OK? And that was uh, through your legs, all right? Now, th there's some of you old-fashioned guys that are as old as I am, or maybe older that might frown on that. I don't think you should. I think that's fine. I don't think, I think that's fine. He's going to cross there like that real hard. The key is, go ahead. And he goes, that's fine. That's quick. That's good enough. And 
the purpose of every dribble that you do is that when he comes and goes through this a little slower, Renee, is that when he makes his move, he wants me here. He wants me here so you can see where he's throwing it. There's Troy. Now, if he's here, uh, uh, Troy's, Troy's guarding Eric. If, if Eric is being played hard, he can see that. Right? But if I'm standing in here like this in front of him, I'm liable to get a hand on the ball. So whether he's trying to penetrate to go to the basket for some kind of a layup, wherever he is, or whether he wants to try to beat some man in transition on the fast break, or whether he just wants to initiate the offense, he's got to have some kind of dribble move. And I'd say for 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes every day, if you had gone to Princeton, you'd see us working on some kind of dribble move with everybody. This guy wants to get something started. And so here, he's gonna, gonna beat me with a little crossover so he can see that he wants to throw it to Eric. All right, go ahead. All right, good, a little faster than that. Okay, Marcus, go ahead, here you go. That's it. That's it, little, okay, keep your head up, that's it. That's it, okay. Now don't get too close to the guy you're throwing to. Okay, all right. Good, Marcus, good. Good, not too bad. Good. Okay, good, that's right. Okay, Jimmy, all right, come on. That's it, okay. And what you might wanna do is you might wanna have a coach here that's a lot springier than I am, uh, that would want to get his body in front of his man there to try to prevent that, all right? Now, what happens in here, that your, the center, Rene, has got to set his man up for what he's trying to do. He's got to have some idea. He wants to make it easy, all right? And you'll find out, there's a lot of my sayings, I didn't pick it up myself, is that that you work hard to make things easy. Why do you work hard? Why do you work hard to make things easy? All right? And it's not that, it's not that I invented that statement because uh, if you don't mind a little uh, anecdote, that's what Ginger Rogers said about Fred Astaire. She had been asking him why they, why they practice so hard, and, and that's what he said. We work hard to make things easy. So here's a guard here. Renee's gonna set, set up. He's, he can't, the defense can't look at that crossover all the time. So he might want to try something different. And let's say what, what is different is that he'd like to get me to think that he's going that way. And so when I go to pick him up in there like that, he reverses his dribble. Okay, goes through his leg again. That's one of his favorite moves, I think. All right, so he comes in there and this guy starts digging. And do it again. But now, how about giving me the back of your body? Just reverse your dribble. That's it. And he turns around in there like that, and then he cuts again. All right? Okay, go ahead, Marcus. Here you go. Okay. All right, not too bad. Not too bad. Whoa! Out of the way here. <laughs> okay. All right? It's not how fast you go, fellas. It's not how fast you go. It's... Go a little slower now. Just go a little slower. That's it. A little slower. Oh, okay. If you had to examine that, the first thing you'd say here is that they're taking too much room. You're taking too much room. You wanted to criticize this in a constructive manner, of course, all right? They're taking too much room. So that when Rene comes in here like that, he still wants to keep the distance between himself and the guy he's throwing to. The modern terminology for that is spacing, all right? Years ago, you used to say, you don't want to get too close to your man. Now they got more technical, and so they go, spacing, keep your spacing. Right? So what happened here is that you don't want to take so much room, and you might be going a little bit too fast in there like that. Just remember, you're trying to throw the ball 
to him, and you're trying to throw at this angle. And here's something you got to keep in mind, if you would, that when Rene comes down in here like this, and he goes in here like this and tries to make a pass from here, going to get swiped, all right, back here. There's no place to go. He's got to keep, he's got to keep this angle here if he can. And the best way to do that is to go in one direction and come back in the other. It's not going too far. There it is. You still have that angle so you can pass it. So in the event he would go back door, because this is what he's going to do. This is what he's going to do. Every time he's overplayed, he's going back door. Right? So it's not how fast you do that. Right? It's the way you set it up. All right? So we had a crossover. And now just go a little slower, more slowly in here, and then reverse your dribble. Throw it and cut. Go ahead. Now cut. All right. OK? Here you go. That's it. Here you go. Good. 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 Good, Nathan. All right. Good. All right. Good. All right. Good. OK. Oh, that's it. Good. All right. And so what you do is you change the direction of your body and the ball with one hand, as opposed to crossover dribble with one hand. I've heard it mentioned, the paw dribble. One time when Jeff Petrie played for me, I taught him this move, and he went up to Poconos to play during the summer, and this guy said, did you ever hear of the paw dribble? So somebody had given it a name. I mean, it's, it's, I call it inside hand because that's what you're doing. You're exposing, Renee, you're exposing your right hand to me. And you're going in that direction there. And then when you stay there, when you get close, you're going to pull it out like that. That's it. And what he did is what I see a lot of, a lot of action with the hand. But I don't know if there's enough movement on the ball in here. And it's risky because what happens in here, right here, you, you're violating every rule that you, you have. You don't want that inside hand change but what happens you're coming down in here like that and you're kicking off and the ball goes over like that i mean there's 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 not so much of this as so much as there's movement on the ball because you want to throw it to him all right so just do do it that way see if you can not so much and go a little slow you're going over that's it here you go throw it to him that's it that's it oh up, get it going going this way don't stare at the ground. That's pretty good. That's it. No, too much action there, not enough movement there. Pretty good. Pretty good. All right? Pretty good. Good, Jimmy. Hold it. OK. There's, there's not so much of this as so much as there's movement on the ball because you want to throw it to him, all right? Sometimes you'll hear a guy say, force him into the middle. Another guy will say, force him down the side. And I think down through the years, I can safely say uh, with some accuracy, that no one could say that against any team that I coach. I mean, they could say it, but it didn't work. You couldn't say, here, keep that guy out of the middle by forcing down the side, because we would work hard on these moves in here like that. And if Nathan would, after a couple of weeks of practice, he would understand that if he went there real hard down with your right hand, go ahead, that I chase you down in there like that, and real quickly, boom, get out of there. That's it, you take the middle. Right? Or well, that, that force them down the, force them down the uh, side. Don't let him go in, into the middle. And, and that's it. That's it. It's the same thing. Get, get back in here. And he could do it. So in other words, what I'm saying is if you can dribble the ball, this guy on defense, as I said, 
does not have eyes in the back of his head. And so the better fundamentally you are, the better off you are, okay? So what happens there is we're doing that for six minutes, right? And they would try it on the other side because you have to, he would swing the ball, all right? And let's get our three guys over there. Let's get the balls over here, all right? And so, Rene, you have him. And when he comes down the court like that, he's being played hard here. And, but, but he sees that uh, Antoine is not being played hard, all right? And so, and he comes down there, he swings it, boom, all right? And so, do it again, all right? That's it. And what he does, I mean, he saw that all the way back there. He saw, he saw the side was being played tight. He saw that. So he, you're going to set that up in there. Maybe what you'll do is you'll dribble hard down there, reverse your dribble, and then swing it. That's it. Just, that's it. Swing it. That's it. All right? He sees that. Come up to the cone, cross his dribble over, and go in for a lefty layup. Go ahead, John. That's it. All right, here you go. All right. Go closer to the cone. All right. The first thing you see when you do this is that these fellas here are not as good at this as, as our guards were. They're, they're not as good with the ball as our guards were. And that's to be expected. Because I know sometimes when a high school coach sees a big guy, the first thing he does is put him down the block. He tells them to stop dribbling the ball, throw it to the guard. Don't take any outside shots. That happens a lot. And yet, there isn't one guy here that's as tall as Magic Johnson. Not one. And no one stopped him from dribbling. Thank goodness they didn't. Or Michael Jordan or some of these great players who are tall that also have, are skillful. You don't want to stop that. Now, when you come across here, Sean, here you, here you gotta remember that your guy is moving on defense, and so you put the ball out in front of him like that, he's just gonna steal it. So you gotta go across there, go slow, go across there, get me to move in here, get me to move. And then in here, as, as you get, kick off with that foot and the ball comes right across your body. Not too much, I'm, here I am, all right? It's gotta go across in there like this, and it may not be a good dribble. It might be that the spin dribble is better. So as you come across in here like this, you're looking as though you're gonna play with one of your teammates and you come off in here like this and kick off and the ball comes right over. Just like that. Here, here you go. One, two, there you go. You're looking across the court there. Here you go, come on. That's it. Not bad, a little bit more movement there. Come on, here you go. A little too far over that way. Not too bad, Eric. Better than you've been doing it. Here you go. Ha! Ah, nothing. Come on. Hiya! Ah, nothing there. It's gotta, it's gotta go slow and get it right. If you, if you have to go slow, get it right. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty. Oh yes. Not too bad. Now watch. Go slow this time, Tommy. Go slow. Just go do it slow. Bring it across. Oh, not bad. All right. Here you go. Ah, a little better. A little better. Okay, here you go. Oh, a little better, I gotta show. See now, right here, if you're a high school coach, you'll get, you'll get, uh, uh, you didn't tell me your name. Yeah. Anthony. You'll get Anthony over there and show him how to do it. And so, one of the flaws I have with thinking, and I 
picked this up from Thomas Jefferson, as you know, was a great American. He called it the education of the discretion. I'm going to have to explain that for my boys because school didn't start yet and they're not ready. All right? So what he meant was teach a guy to know how to do something. So here comes a guy that doesn't have a good dribble. And so you say, well, he can't, he can't, he can't dribble, that guy. He doesn't have a spin dribble. So let him do something else. Well, Thomas Jefferson would say, as I would say, show him how to do it. Show him how to do it. If there's any talent in there somewhere, it's going to come out fast. It's going to take 50 years to learn. It's going to come out fast. Now here we go. And this time what we'll do is we'll spin because when this guy comes across in there like that, in here, this guy starts to dig. And here again, you're not shooting so much for, for how fast you go. You're shooting to make it nice and tight and use your body in there and go ahead. There you go. Come on, let's go. Your head up. Ah, you're not used to that. Here you go. Pretty good. Pretty good. Don't take too much room. We have our guards over here and our forwards over here. And the balls are over here. And for one of a better name, for one of a better name, I used to call this drive drill. I used to call this drive drill. And you start right over there. Joe. Ryan. OK, Ryan, start over there. And he's going to dribble the ball over. This is the guy that's guarding er Eric. Because if those two guys want to play together, those two guys want to play together. The only way they can do that is for Ryan to throw it to him. That's one, all right? And he sees that he's closely guarded. It's going to be swiped. Can't do that. So now he can take it over to him, all right? That's two. That's provided he can dribble. And so when you talk about what you're going to try to do, what you're going to try to teach, you've got to build that up by teaching the things that you're going to do when you're playing. All right? So there's timing involved here for these two guys. He's got to get me to move. He's got to get me to move so he can come off this thing. Ryan's got to get the guy in front of him to move, too, because if you recall, I said the main job is to keep the guy that's in front of him on his side. Get him on his side. And so that when he comes across in here to set this screen, and that dummy there is the screen, it'll be me. Come on. He's got to move me a little bit. And so as I come across in here, he's ahead. He's just enough ahead. He comes down in there like that. Drew with his left hand and picks me right there. Steps right in there and sticks his hand up just a little bit. He can't, he can't stick it out this far to call an offensive foul. But sometimes you'll, you'll run into some teams where uh, the coach of the other team doesn't like the, the way you're screening. And I've heard this happen before. Uh, you'll yell, knock him on his rear end in a different word. All right? And so this elbow here keeps you from getting racked in the throat by somebody that, that doesn't believe in Christian virtue, all right? And so when that, that thing goes up there, you go to hurt him, he'll just give you that, and you can't do it. 
protects you from being run down. Eric is coming around here. He's run his man into the pick in here. And as he has the ball, as he has, as he's get, gets, as he's handed the ball in here like this, he's already looking to see what he's got here. He's looking. And what he should see is Ryan's man and this guy that's been picked. And if he sees there about even, he looks like he might have a shot at going in for a layup. All right? That's your first one. All right? So go in for a layup. Pretty good. Go pretty close. All right? Here you go. Come on, Sean. Close. Good. All right? Here you go. Good, 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 Marcus. Good. All right. All right, oh, that's nice. Here you go. Here you go. Good. Keep your head up, Tommy. Keep your head up. You want to you watch where you're going? Good, 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 Anthony. Here you go. And so he comes across in there, Latin. He lost me a little bit, and I'm trailing him here, and I'm trying to catch up to him in there like that. And so when he sees, hand off there, Ryan, and he sees I'm going over, then he's going to drive back the opposite way. There you go. So stop behind the screen and drive the opposite way. All right? Here you go. Take a look. Oh, there's a two foot layup there. Here you go. Stop at the screen. Good. Good. Good, Renee. Good. Pick the guy. Pick the guy. John, pick him. All right, here you go. You can get a one foot layup out of that. One foot layup. Good. Try to shoot it on this side of the basket. Here you go. Good, good, Sean. Good. Here you go. Come on. Set the screen, Troy. There you go. Ah, put the layup in. Ah. Good. Now what happens is he comes across there. Who's on D? I'm on D. Here he goes. You got a guy who's taught to overplay. Deny. All right? And so you might hear it from the bench. Sometimes you hear it from the stands. They're so indoctrinated to the denial defense, they'll all yell, deny, deny. And so what happens in here, he comes across in there and he tries to beat you. Hold on, go slow, Troy. He tries to beat you to the spot. All right. And when, come on, come on. And when you try to explain this, you, you can show this, the guy with the ball, you can show your team just what happens when this guy comes towards the ball in here like that, and he causes trouble for him. He'll, he'll never get it. While he's going by, he just might knock it out of his hand. All that baloney. So don't go towards the ball when you're closely guarded. So you're going back door. There you go. All right, come on. Here you go. All right, pretty good. Come on down this way, Eric, and then go across. Good. A little too close to him. You don't get too close to him. You're too, you try to hit him right about here. Try to hit him right about here. Right about here, Troy. Right about here, go across there. All right, pretty good. All right. All right, a little better pass, Nathan. Here you go. Don't pick it up. That one's going to get, somebody's going to get a hand on it. Somebody's going to steal that one, Marcus. All right, okay. Now, if they can, and if you wanna, if you wanna do something here too, that'll help you, you've just been working on your dribbling, so you may wanna say to the to top line, before you take it over, try a crossover. You might wanna say to your top line, work on the spin. Spin before you take it over. Work on the inside hand change. So you try to combine 